And in addition to recognizing God is at work in your life, my second point is you've got to learn how to trust God's plan That's it. That's it. even when you don't understand it. Well, mm. Jeremiah said it like this, I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. It's helpful to remember that if it's God's plan, no one person or group of persons can stop it. If it's God's vision, nobody can stop God's vision. Oh, let James and John jockey for position. If it's for you, you're going to get it. Let Judas betray her. If it's for you, you're going to get it. Let Peter deny. Let Thomas doubt. If God is for it, nothing can stop it. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Jones, Sister Jones, the name Moses means rescue. Moses was delivered to be a deliverer. And what a deliverer he was. The entire book of Exodus is the testimony to the leadership of Moses and the patience of Almighty God. The children of Israel were trapped at the Red Sea. Moses stretched out his rod and the sea split like a sidewalk. Oh, blessed name. The children of Israel were thirsty at Mara, And despite their grumbling against Moses, he cried to the Lord on their behalf. And God revealed himself as Jehovah Rapha and made the bitter waters sweet. In the desert of Elam, they grumbled against Moses because they were hungry. Moses called on the Lord and the Lord sent them manna in the morning and quail in the evening. While they were camping at Rephidim, the Israelites couldn't find no water. They argued with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses cried out to the Lord and water flowed out of a rock. The Amalekites attacked them and Moses held up his arms all day and all night so that they could get the victory. Moses made them very comfortable. He did everything for them. He prayed for them, interceded for them, talked to God for them. He secured the commandments. He organized them, taught them, and begged for angelic protection for them. However, they still undercut him. They still grumbled against him, doubted him, and talked about him like a dog with five legs and three tails. Come on, somebody. Moses couldn't even choose his own wife without them getting all up in his business. Oh, my God. The people's response frequently was tooth and nail, scratch and claw, bicker and cry, fight and argue every step of the way. Yet despite it all, through it all, the marvelous ministry of Moses continued to sustain them and keep them and lift them and build them up and stand them up. But Moses is dead. That's right. Moses died, y'all. And the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses, my servant, is dead. Notice God called Moses his servant. Yes, sir. This is indicative of ownership. Uh -huh. Moses, my servant. That's right. He belonged to me. Yes, sir. He was with you, uh -huh. but he belonged to me. Right. Moses, my servant. The implication was clear for the people of Israel. Namely that every time y'all fought Moses, y'all were really fighting me. Every time you refused to hear Moses, you were refusing to hear God. Every time you mistreated Moses, it was really an offense against God because God called Moses my servant. Moses was among them on assignment. My grandma's generation used to say it's a dangerous thing to mess with a servant of God. 
And I add that even if it's a servant of God messing with a servant of God. You see, God is creator. God is owner and master of the universe. And the universe is, so to speak, God's house. And I don't believe that God takes kindly to those in the protective custody of his house arguing, grumbling, fighting, and creating disruption. Sometimes, every now and then, God has to exact some divine disciplinary action. Yeah, Jesus, All right. All right. Would you tell somebody and say, don't mess with me. Because <laughs> you don't want none from my daddy. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Paul wrote, Paul wrote to the clowning Christians in Corinth. And he addressed this issue. And he said, for this reason, many are weak and sickly among you. And many sleep. Oh, God, let me get out of there. But now Moses is dead. That's the problem the people were called upon to process. It's a circumstance of loss. Moses is dead. Mm -hmm. Moses, your intercessor, he's gone. Uh -huh. Moses, your deliverer, your provider, your manner manufacturer, <laughs> your quail giver, your water supplier. He's dead. <laughs> Moses, the one who fussed, argued, pleaded, and walked in the wilderness 40 years trying to lead you, is dead. He missed the promised land himself, attempted to relate to the people of Israel, but he's dead. As anointed and compassionate and powerful and gifted as he was, he's no longer a part of your equation. He's now yesterday's headlines. Moses is dead. That's the problem and it's also the possibility. There comes a point in life where you must put the past in its proper perspective because often longing for what was inhibits our ability to embrace what is or to envision what can be. I believe you should learn from the past, appreciate its legacy, heed its lesson. I believe that you should recite the stories of the past, retell its history, rehearse the lessons you have learned. I believe you should remember the joys of the past and recount its victories. But I firmly believe that no one can live in the past. That was then. Look at somebody and say, but this is now. And so, my sisters and brothers, the challenge of today's message is to examine your life and accept the reality that whatever or whoever Moses was for you, he's dead. Well. This is a critical intercession because I suspect that if you look over your shoulder, you can see now where and how God has brought you through wet places and dry ground. Your past bears the marks of both blessings and brokenness. You've had ups and downs. You've been in and you've been out. Together and apart. You rode high and you sank low. You've seen God fight your battle, steal your storm, open your doors, make ways out of no way, heal your body, restore your relationship, break your addiction, save your soul, bless your life, deliver you from bondage in your past. You have experienced God's mercy, known God's grace, felt God's love. But what should you do now that the past is over? You can't live there anymore. The scripture's answers is that Moses is dead. The paradigm is past. Accept this encouragement. The future is yours by design and by default. You can't escape the future. It's yours by design and by default. You can walk into your destiny or you can default into a future that was not meant.